the committee. Uh, Ms. Houlihan. General Lady is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Later today, I will offer the motion to recommit on this bill. I stand with my colleagues who have stood shoulder to shoulder in support of our brave service members in an effort to put together this bill for the last nearly a year. I stand with the spirit of those who are currently serving in uniform, who are sick and tired of this legislative body politicizing their lives, their li livelihoods, and their bodily autonomy. I rise today in honor of my grandfather and my father, who served full, distinguished careers in the military, and my mom and my grandmother, who served as military spouses each for over 30 years. I rise today as someone who was born and grew up on a military base and moved across this nation and to other countries, and I rise as someone who raised my own hand and my own child when the time came. And I rise for my cousins who serve today. I don't need my colleagues to tell me what it's like to be a mom in uniform. I live that experience. Or a child in the military, I live that too. So here I am today, standing up on behalf of all service women and military families who are willing to risk their lives for our freedoms. And yet, we are not willing to protect theirs. What I have seen over the floor in the past two days has really saddened me. Targeting LGBTQ families like my own, targeting libraries, targeting the reproductive freedoms of service women and military families stationed in states that do not respect their own bodily autonomy. Chair, we even saw a colleague refer to our black service members as colored people. To my colleagues on the other side of the aisle, let me make a few things clear. We agree there are threats around the world like China that we should be spending our time and efforts on. We agree the historic recruitment challenges we face are a risk to our national security. We agree the brave men and women who serve in uniform should not be used as political pawns. So why? Why did this Republican-led body decide to take a historically bipartisan piece of legislation from the House Armed Services Committee hostage by adding scores of extreme GOP culture war priorities to it, including, least of all, clear as day, a backdoor policy to a national abortion ban? Chair, I want the American people to know that Democrats support our men and women in uniform. We proudly voted forward a bipartisan piece of legislation to increase their pay, to improve their housing, to expand their access to child care, 58 to 1. But the GOP is putting that bipartisan progress in jeopardy, and the toughest part is that they know it. I have a great deal of respect for the handful of my colleagues who recognize the extreme turn that this legislation has taken, and I thank them. And so I look at them again, and I look to them again. We must do what is right by our service members, put the political gamesmanship aside, and return this extreme bill back to committee where it can return it to its bipartisan nature. I will work tirelessly across the aisle to ensure that we give the president and our nation, and in fact our globe, a bill that truly provides for the collective, collective defense of our Amer American values. It really saddens me to say that this bill does not do that. This bill will hurt our recruitment and retention, and it makes it extremely difficult for our proud veterans. It has expired. The gentle lady, an additional 30 seconds. A proud veteran like myself and so many others to look at future leaders of America and say that yes, this military is a home for you. I took the uniform nearly 30 years ago, and it's a travesty that service women today will have less freedoms than I did. I urge my colleagues on both sides of the aisle to support this MPTR, send this extreme bill back to committee where we can truly deliver for those in uniform. Thank you, Chair, and I yield back. The gentleman from Alabama is recognized.